So what we're going to do now is we're going to take a look at the uh, equations that we'll be using for solving air conditioning process problems. And we'll begin, what I'd like you to do is uh, recall the psychrometric chart that we looked at earlier. Sometimes it's useful to look at the psychrometric chart and then use it as a bit of a a graphical tool enabling us to understand how a particular process might be working. So I'm just going to quickly sketch out what the psychrometric chart kind of looked like. Um, and that, that was similar to what we had down here. We had temperature dry bulb and that was going from roughly 0 degrees C up to about 50 degrees C. Uh, we had specific humidity on the vertical. And symbol for that is omega. And up here, this is where we said relative humidity was 100%. So that would be fully saturated air. Now, what we can do, we can look at uh, different processes that may occur and see where they would go on a psychrometric chart. So to begin with, let's say we have a process and I'll draw this here as being our initial point. And let's say we're heating the air. If we're heating the air, we're increasing the temperature and we're not adding moisture or removing, it's just simple heating. So that would be a process that we would describe with an arrow like this. On the flip side, if we were cooling the air, we're not removing moisture unless we get to the dew point, but let's assume we're not. And so that might be a process that would describe cooling here. Now let's say we had a process whereby what we are doing is we are adding moisture or, or liquid to the air. That's going to increase the specific humidity and it may or may not change the dry bulb temperature. And so that might be a humidification process. It will certainly move in that direction. Now, dehumidification, where you remove moisture, there your relative humidity is going to drop, as will your specific humidity. And so that would be a process going in this direction. And then you can have combinations of those. So to show examples of, of those combinations, if you had a process that is doing this, that might be cool and dehumidify. And if you have a process that is going in this direction, that might be heat and humidify. So when we look at uh, different processes within air conditioning, what we can do is we can look at this schematic of the psychrometric chart and get kind of a gut feel for which way the process might be taking uh, place in and, and use this as a bit of a guide. Uh, so with that, what I want to do now is look at uh, the schematic that we will use for these types of processes. So typically what we'll do is we'll draw out a duct because this is what any air conditioning duct would look like if you could go up above the ceiling tiles of the building you're in right now. You'll see metal ducts and, and that is your air conditioning distribution system. And what we will show are multiple states. So beginning we have state one coming in and here we will have conditions, let's say temperature one, Maybe we have relative humidity one. Maybe we know the specific humidity at one. And then different processes that we may be uh, running the uh, airflow through. So air is flowing through this duct. And maybe we have a heating or a cooling coil, for example. And the way that we often show that 
is this curly thing, and that's basically a heat exchanger and air to some sort of liquid uh, heat exchanger, and the liquid is either a heating fluid or a cooling fluid. So for this, it could be Q dot N, or in the case of heating, or it could be Q dot out in the case of cooling. And that will take us to a new state, and we'll call that state two, and that will then have, again, specific information for that state. So T2, relative humidity to, specific humidity to. And then let's say the next step that we want to have is humidification. And so the way that we will illustrate that is we will put a bar, which is basically a pipe, with little nozzles on it. And these are spray nozzles that they then generate either a mist of water or sometimes you will also inject steam depending upon the process uh, by which you want to humidify. Uh, by injecting water, you're going to get a little bit of an evaporative cooling effect, and so you have to account for that as well. Uh, by injecting steam, you can actually add humidification and heating at the same time. And so in the winter in North America, for example, you'd want to have steam uh, because then you don't have to preheat the air prior to that. And after that, that will take us to state three, where we are then exiting this conditioning section and our temperature will be T3, and then we would have relative humidity 3, specific volume 3. So that is typically what uh, one of our systems will look like, and so that is the system schematic. What I now want to do is take a look at the conservation equations, and, and those are the conservation equations of mass and energy that we will apply to these types of air conditioning processes. So to begin with, um, so we're looking at conservation equations for both mass and energy. The mass conservation is going to be conservation of air mass, mass flow rate of air, as well as water. Uh, so we, we have those two things that we'll be conserving mass with, or you could combine them together. Usually we treat them separate though, as well as conservation of energy. That's our first law, which we've seen before. So let's begin by looking at conservation of mass. And for that, what we'll do is we'll look at the mass balance for air. And here you just have quite simply mass flow rate of air in is equal to the mass flow rate of air exiting. And so we use the subscript I and E, I for inlet, E for exit. So looking at our schematic that we just had on the screen here a second ago, if we were to apply mass conservation of air to that schematic, what we would have is mass flow rate air at one equals mass flow rate air at two equals mass flow rate air at three. We're not adding or removing air at any point along the system. And so it's conserved. <coughs> Excuse me. It's winter in Canada and I have a cold, so that's why my voice is a little messed up. Um, mass balance of water, let's take a look at that and I will do that on a new slide because it's a little more detailed. So if you're looking at the mass balance of water, For that, what we would have is mass water in equals summing of mass water exiting the system. And for the above, uh, the one that we had from before, our schematic, let's go back and take a quick look at that. So this was our schematic, and what we have uh, we weren't saying there was any humidification or dehumidification here, so we didn't really make any comments on that. However, we certainly are adding water, and oops, sorry, I should have added this onto the diagram. What we have here is mass water in. So that says that we're adding mass, and, and that mass is water into the system. So let's go back and take a look at our conservation 
of water or the mass balance for water. So for that particular scenario, what we would have is we would have the mass flow rate of water at one. Now it's air. How can there be water flowing in the air? Well, there is because remember it's an air vapor mixture. So we have water vapor with the air. And so that's the mass of water that is in the airstream coming in. You always have a little bit of, of uh, water vapor unless your relative humidity is zero. Uh, which is very, very rare. So we have mass water coming in will equal mass water at state two. Remember that was just the heating or cooling, so there was no addition or removal of water. And then if we look at mass water of one plus the mass water in through the humidification process, that will then be equal to mass water at state three, so exiting our duct. And the other thing that we can write is we can say that mass water at I, so this is just any generic location, can be expressed in terms of our specific volume, or specific humidity, sorry, specific humidity omega, multiplied by the mass flow rate of air. So if you recall, our specific humidity is expressed as being kilograms of water vapor per kilogram of dry air. And so by multiplying these two, so our specific humidity with the mass flow rate of air, what we are then able to get is the mass flow rate of water at that point in our airstream. So those are two of our conservation equations that we can use, the mass balance of water, mass balance of air. The last conservation equation is the first law of thermodynamics. So let's take a look at that. So writing out the first law And this is for a steady flow system. And I've cast it for multiple input and output. So that's our form of the first law, which we will apply and you make your assumptions in terms of are you doing work or are you adding heat or removing it? So we will be applying that at times. And in this equation, note that we have enthalpy. So the place where we get enthalpy from you can either get it from the psychrometric chart provided that you have a psychrometric chart for whatever elevation you are at or what we do is we use the approximation equation that we talked about in an earlier lecture. Now, your equation for this second part may be a little different, uh, especially for this enthalpy term here, uh, but nonetheless, that is an approximation. So either what you do for enthalpy, you use your psychrometric chart, or you use this equation here, which then enables you to determine the enthalpy of your fluid stream. So that is uh, air conditioning processes in a generic manner. Next, what we'll do is we'll take a look at a couple of the different processes that we talked about, uh, heating, cooling, humidification, dehumidification.